Welcome back. 1059. This video is about 3D printing whoop frames. I should have grabbed the cockroach frame. I've been rocking the cockroach frame from, um, I'm assuming it's Tiny Whoop. They're out of stock in my color that I like. They never made a green because you know me and greens, like me and LEDs. And, um, I thought it was time to try something different. I haven't flown a 3D printed whoop frame since way back when the Lynx something else, something something came out. <clears throat> I hyped about them. I thought they were great. <clears throat> and um, they didn't last very long. <clears throat> Excuse me. They started cracking, breaking, smashing, too delicate. And I would say, ooh, that was quite a while ago. That was right in the beginning. So we, I would say seven years ago, maybe even more. Quote me on that if anybody can figure out or remember when those Lynx 65 frames came out with the 3D print. The whole thing was pretty much 3D printed, but. So I swapped over and printed this after a lot of fun and I'd like to make that joke and show you guys my garbage can that was full of the failed prints and trying to understand the settings and all of that fun stuff. It failed a lot. And it failed because of warping, temp too high, temp too low, bed temp too high, too low. And it finally got it right. And I'm very, very happy with how this came out. I flew it four packs because I don't fly this very often. So my batteries don't get good cycling. So they sit a while. Got to wake them up and got to fly a couple packs for them to kind of get the, the length back and flight time that I want. Um, characteristics aren't bad with this. With it being a little bit thicker, I do notice a little more wash, and this isn't tunable because of not being a, a Beta Flight style board. It's the original Inductrix FPV board, and what really makes me mad is that I had a Mobulus 6. I loved it, and I gave it to somebody I called a friend a couple years ago, and they never flew it. They were too stubborn to change some of the settings in it and get it flying right so it just sat collected dust it's probably buried somewhere lost and um i cannot find the mobilis 6 with a spectrum receiver built into it anymore and uh it's quite frustrating because i'd like to get and that's part of i wouldn't call it an issue but they don't make boards anymore with spectrum and if you're flying something small and light adding a receiver to it adds weight it's a pain in the ass i don't know if i want to deal with it I'd love to find an original Mobulus 6 with a, uh, I think it was an SPI receiver built into it. I can't remember. Or if it had one buried underneath. You know what? It probably had. Either way, I'm going to look into building a brushless 1S whoop again. Um, so, on that note, I was like, what can I do or have a backup frame? So if this thing were ever to break, and if you're not, familiar with 3d printing in different materials this is a pla plus i believe and it's i cannot get over how strong it is it's super impressive it's got some flex it will definitely bounce off of things um i'm excited i don't crash hardcore it's light especially if it falls worst case you'll break one of these off and honestly it's under if you really rush, you could probably do it in five, but I'm going to say 10 minutes to swap this thing completely over, assuming they are the same frame. This thing is snug and deep underneath the um, rims of the ducts here, and it made it a little challenging to get everything underneath there, which puts, pre puts pressure. It's touching a little bit, so I think some of the vibrations are carrying over. So I kind of wanted to do something a little bit different. So after the same kind of headache, I printed this. It's lighter. It had printed a separate bay, which is Gorilla glued to it. Super light. I got the battery to fit in there. That was a test fit before I glued it to make sure. So what I did was made sure the battery started. I heated this end up just a little bit to make it just a little soft and then push the battery in and leave it there, let it cool down so it forms two of the batteries so it's snug, but not so snug that you're going to break any of this. As you can see, the ducts are a little bit smaller. Different setup. And this one sits the board on top, which will give me a little bit less stress on the board. So it should fly a little bit smoother. I got brand new motors 
the Lumineer black motors, which are basically the uh, special sauce motors, 19,500 kV, I believe, somewhere in that ballpark. So this is going to get fresh motors, and then I'll swap everything over from that and keep that as my backup frame. But I highly recommend getting into trying, if you have a 3D printer, print out some frames. Obviously, you can print them out of different materials. The PLA Plus is nice and strong. It will last quite a while. Like I said, this thing, it's incredible. It took some of the frames. So what was happening, same thing, is I was getting warping. I forget which way it printed. It printed flat down. So it would print, and obviously that thing was there, so it was on there. And it wasn't adhering to the board, to the bed, or when it was, it was melting. And it wasn't actually melting, which is the funny story. What ended up happening, it was printing too fast, so it was just whipping past, and it was creating almost like a flat spot and not giving me a clean print. But after I slowed down the speed, I got exactly what I need and want, and I look forward to it. And I'm going to try it in some other colors. I may actually get some other boards so I have some backups or just be able to switch back and forth. And the next thing is switch out this camera. This is a very OG, old, old POS um, all-in-one. I forget what the hell brand it was. I got it quite a while ago. But I know there's an e-sheen out there that I got in my cart that has OSD. And I want that so I know not to bring the battery down too far. Because these things act really crappy. And the reason it's going past its limit, it's crazy. I added this awesome rainbow flashing strobing LED thing that lights up the frame, lights up the room when you're flying around. But it allows it to drain the battery past that save point that's built into the um, the board. So it would start flashing underneath and really deplete power so you had to land to protect the battery before it went too low. This allows you, because it's draining, to go past that. So yesterday flying around, I know it was getting low, but I was doing some battery testing and I brought it down and it was 3.1, almost 3 volts, and it was just bleh. And then when I plugged the battery back in to charge it, it didn't register it at all. And that's another thing with the chargers, that if the battery goes past a safe point, it doesn't even register when you plug it in. So you have to do like a trickle charge on it at a very low rate to get the battery back into a position where it'll recognize it in the chargers. So having OSD will be next and be put on to this thing. So 3D print your frames, try something different, create your own. Um, I had it one time way back, it was just the basic X and then you mounted your stack and stuff and it was all open prop and I called it Franken Whoop and we're talking quite a ways back. That thing was a lot of fun. So if you want something that's a little more outdoors and not, you don't fly like through the, like you don't fly through the trees and small gaps like I tend to do where the prop guard saves your ass. And you can print them without the ducts. And then there's also carbon fiber little X's that you can get that attach to the motor to give a little more strength and doesn't weigh anything. So you could do that to that style frame and get a little 1S ripper also if you're looking to do brushed. But if you go brushless, it's a whole different monster. I would, because of the speed that you can get out of a brushless, and they're probably a touch heavier, different material. But that'd be a neat experiment. So I might do that print out because they make the beta 65 frame in a brushless version or it is a brushless version and see how well it holds up to crashing and banging around. So I think that might be my winter project. So stay tuned for more, but get out there, push yourself, try different things, 3D print and have fun. Peace.